Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran. I help people using a spiritual perspective. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think that we're all making a mistake doing during the spiritual process, which is treating spirituality like it is a totem pole. I assume you guys know what a totem pole is, right? It's a Native American symbol, object, right? And different to uh, it displays a hierarchy, essentially, right? So you've probably seen it at some point in your life. And maybe it'll be like a bear or a wolf or an eagle or a man's face or something like that, varying degrees of things. Um, and they'll just be in different orders, right? With the top of it being uh, the most powerful creature or thing that uh, is being displayed in that totem pole, right? That was a pretty piss poor explanation of what a totem pole is, but uh, we got through it. It was messy, but that's essentially what a totem pole is. And the purpose of a totem pole is to denote, like I said, hierarchy. So in spiritual communities, and this is usually very prevalent in New Age spirituality, is the idea that your spirituality, what you do, what you say, what you practice exists on some sort of hierarchy, on some sort of totem pole, some sort of list. And we treat it we treat it in in sort of tandem with the word vibration. So we think that our vibration is determined by you know our level on this spiritual totem pole. And so we think that it's up here as we should be doing these things and down here we shouldn't be doing these things. So a lot of people act as gatekeepers essentially for what is considered spiritual and what's not considered spiritual. But the problem with this of course is that none of that really is spiritual. One, spirituality is open to interpretation. It's not a organized religion with set rules and doctrines, okay? it's a an expression of oneself to the fullest and deepest degree. That's what spirituality should be about. That's what it is to me. It's an understanding and an exploration of oneself to the deepest possible level that they can go into their own lifetime. It is not a specific guideline. It doesn't have bylaws. There is no rules and regulations towards it. It's not supposed to be that way. And yet we treat it like this is how it's supposed to be, like a, a hierarchy. And I was very guilty of doing this at the beginning of my journey. I think a lot of people are, uh, but if you're one of them, then you know, consider the idea that the things that you do don't necessarily have anything to do with your vibration, necessarily. It, usually it's how you respond to things that determines your vibration, not 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 your actions necessarily not not you know whether or not you have a, a drink every now and again not whether or not you smoke weed not if you participate in this sort of spirituality or if you believe this or have an opinion on this or if you curse or if you you don't watch spiritual programs every day or you meditate in a different way or you practice a certain method that other people may not practice Spirituality is an open, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be a traditional go on YouTube, help other people type of thing. It doesn't have to be tarot readings. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, plant medicine, right? It can be a connection to yourself. And in that way, you're helping others and you're helping yourself in the process, right? Like I make music, right? Making music is not what you would think is a traditional thing, but I don't have to make my music into some meditative thing. I don't have to start a meditation channel because I have to do something spiritual, right? So the things that we do and the things that we think and the things that we say are not a direct result of our vibration. And in the same vein, our own sense of spirituality and our own actions do not exist on the bottom of some pole and everybody else is up here and we need to get from here to there as quickly as we possibly can. We treat that like we do in our regular society, the class systems which have existed for hundreds and thousands of years. We don't need to do that with spirituality. That's not what it's about. It's not what it's supposed to be about. It's not supposed to be about judgment of one's own path, judgment of others at the same time. Because there's tons of people I've met in this sort of phase of my life where they have openly judged what others do and then at the same time hinder themselves from being able to 
experience some of the same things. Uh, a really easy example is this sort of widespread new age idea that we just can't have negativity in any sense. And we start thinking about positive vibrations and negative vibrations. We've already created a duality. And it's ironic to me because so many of these same people are of course talking about how there is no you know, non-duality. They're talking about how everything is in, you know, it's not black and white. It's all in this ethereal flow of things. They're talking about it in this intellectual sense where everything is one and yet they're splitting things in two at the same time. So it's a very ironic to me that the people who talk about everything being one the most are usually the people who are splitting things in two at the same time. You know, positive and negative emotions. You can't have negative emotions, can't have negative thoughts, can't, can't have any of that, you know? And so the most basic human emotions become unwanted, even more so than they already are. And we judge others for having them, right? Uh, you can't say anything that contradicts uh, a spiritual belief because then suddenly you're not spiritual anymore, right? You know how many times people have looked at me like I wasn't spiritual anymore simply because I didn't go along with the new age belief systems that they had. I, you know, I don't like that stuff. I think it does more harm than good. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't like the law of attraction. I don't like the law of assumption. I don't like a lot of spiritual things because they're ungrounded, number one. And number two, they logically don't make any sense. And number three, they seem to have this effect on people which turns them into worse versions of themselves, just pious, you know, uh, more egoic in a sense. It just develops your ego in a different way. And that's no fun. Nobody likes that really. And these people just become kind of very shrill. And you know, I've lost what I thought was good friends just because I didn't, uh, I, I couldn't handle the the uh, over positivity of everything all the time. You know, I would have a problem, something, and I was looking for a solution. And it's a very sort of that's just kind of how I, I handle things. It's very maybe a man thing to do is look for solutions to fix everything. But you know, that's who I am in a lot of ways. So I, I look for a solution and I, I try to air my grievances. You know, this is what's going on. This is how it is. And, and they would give me the same rehashed new age advice that really never resonated. You know, oh, don't think that way or don't have those emotions because those emotions are going to bring in more of that. Like, you know, it's like, well, I just wanted to talk about the fact that what I'm going through is difficult and I could use a a solution, a, a real way out of this, a, a good advice, not just if you continue to think like that, you're going to get more of that stuff in. You know, that's not helpful and it's not true. So, whichever way you want to look at it, it was a, a difficult relationship to have with these kinds of people because you can never be negative. You can never have a moment where you're just, you know, allowed to be a human. You're allowed to be yourself. You're allowed to, to just let go. And it's, it's not natural. It's not natural to, to border an entire emotional range of who you are. Because if you believe in things existing for a singular purpose, whatever that may be, then we shouldn't shun uncomfortable feelings or the things that we deem negative. They, they should be explored and welcomed and, and, and accepted and maybe hugged and made friends with, not shoved aside and repressed. There's no difference... Uh, from what we do in a spiritual community than what people do and, and talk about in, in psychology, right? The repression and suppression of emotions and ideas and fantasies and dreams and thoughts and ambitions. We're doing the same thing with spirituality but by treating it like it's a totem pole and that there is this place up here where we have to go but we're all down here and so your neighbor is up here and they're just going to remind you about how you're here and then your neighbor is not there and so someone else is reminding them about how they're not there how they're not there and then of course they want to get there so they're doing all this shit to get to the top but then having no success because that's not how it works you know it's not from down to up that's not how spirituality works it's not a totem pole it doesn't start and then end at some sort of perceived height. It's a parallel line. You know, your spirituality is it just goes forward in an unending direction, right? There, there, there's no, it doesn't end, it doesn't really even start. It's just this sort of like big old loop, sort of. It's like trying to understand time from a different perspective, right? Like we understand in a lot of ways, even in science, scientific communities that 
time is not linear, even though it's the way that we perceive it. But in the same sense, we perceive our spirituality uh, and what's right and wrong is a linear thing with a start and an end. But that, that's not how that works. It's a, it's, it doesn't end. It doesn't start. It's, it's, it's who we are constantly evolving and expanding. And so someone's high consciousness or someone's what you would call a high vibration is different from someone else's high vibration or high consciousness. And this is obvious because there are tons of people with different beliefs who are non-religious, religious, atheist, agnostic, have no opinion on anything, too dumb to think about anything, too happy to think about anything, uh, spiritual of different natures, new age, non-new age, Buddhist. Okay, you have hundreds of different ways of looking at life and existing in today's world. And people can be happy and, and high vibration and, and, and soulful and have this level of consciousness, a wisdom about them, a peace about them, without needing to adhere to a specific guideline or a specific way of being. They don't exist within this totem pole reality that we've created for ourselves. So in the same way, the master that you're looking for is not the master that's going to apply for everybody, right? The, the person who would help you the most isn't going to be the person who helps your friend the most, okay? Everybody is different. And spirituality is different. It, it's, a, it's a connectedness to ourselves and to others. But it is not an absolution. It's not religion. It's not supposed to be this, please listen to me. If you're up here, you're doing better than everybody else down here. So your habits, the things that you think, they're not low vibrational. Again, you're just creating a, a divide within yourself. There's already enough of that that exists in society. Now you're doing it on a spiritual level. You're doing it on an emotional level. You're creating a good and a bad and you're categorizing it, which is what the mind loves to do. We love to put things into categories, right? I mean, do you think a penguin and uh, a sea otter give a shit what you call them? They don't care. I mean, most people don't care. You could call, you know, you could call seals and sea lions the same thing. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't even know the difference really, except for what they look like. But I don't know why, you know. So a sea lion, a seal, a penguin, an otter, who gives a shit? They don't care what we call them, but we categorize them so we can tell the difference. And that's fine. That's great. We shouldn't demonize that. But at the same time, if we're going to create these divisions within ourselves, within our own spirituality, we shouldn't demonize that either. We shouldn't, if we're going to do that, then we're either going to have to be aware of what we're doing or stop that process because maybe we've already done that in society enough we don't need to do it with ourselves so the mind does like to put things into boxes and to categorize but do we really need this sort of good and evil negative and positive and high and low vibrational type of attitude i just feel like it causes a lot more pain and suffering than just the acceptance of the natural human evolution of oneself just to be here to exist to not feel like you have to be a certain way or a certain person or act like Eckhart Tolle or act like sad guru or be a guru or believe what this other person says or be a vegan or not be a vegan or you know do what it is that's natural for you because what's natural for you will be evolving anyway right you shouldn't force yourself to be a vegan because you feel that that's the most spiritual thing that you can do you should be a vegan if you uh, have a strong feeling to be a vegan your logical explanations for why that's right or wrong don't matter in the end the feeling behind that, why you want to change something about your life, that's a natural thing and will naturally happen many times throughout your life, regardless of your level of spirituality. So trust yourself, trust in your own, your own spirituality, your own sense of life, you know, trust in your heart, trust in what you want to do. Because if you're going to behave in a way that constricts yourself, you know, you're not actually being spiritual anymore. You're, you're, in our quest to be spiritual and to seek spirituality, to seek the right version of spirituality, we've become unspiritual. It's incredibly ironic, actually, how we deviate from the goal and the desire that we actually have originally and end up in this place where we actually just feel like we're constantly competing. And I feel like there's a lot of that in society anyway. And Of course, it's going to bleed into our own ideas about faith and... Uh, and our opinions on what may or may not exist beyond our physical realm. So it's just something that I wanted to say. Uh, try your best to just not put yourself into a position where it has to be right or wrong. 
put yourself into a position where it's I feel like doing this and this would work I don't feel like doing this and this wouldn't work everybody's different okay guys talk soon